What is up everybody? Today we're going to do a quick video to show you how to use Supabase. Supabase is a alternative, open source alternative to Firebase, which is a Google product if you've ever used Firebase. Supabase is going to be, an, like I said, an open source alternative that has a really nice UI. It's going to allow us to set up a nice backend with a Postgres database without using any code. and It's going to give us a nice REST API. So let's dive in check it out. Also, if you're curious on how to set this up in more detail and potentially actually make requests using Rust, check out the last live stream, which will be posted as well, where you can see me actually kind of struggling through a little bit to make the request with Rust, but you can see how to make that request using the request library for Rust. But today we'll just go over how to set up Supabase and get that REST API. So here's Supabase. Again, it's an open source Firebase alternative. It's super cool. It's going to create a Postgres database for us. You're going to see how easy it is to do that, and you're going to see the REST API that it gives you. Now I'm going to create a project, a temporary project, with an API key, which I'll show here because I'm going to delete the API key in the project right after using it. But ideally, you'd want to store your API key somewhere that you can keep it safe and probably not share it or commit it to any kind of repo. So here again, you can see Supabase is a Firebase alternative. It's going to give us a Postgres database. Authentication, which we're not going to use beyond the API key and the auth token, um, but still it's very cool that it puts it behind authentication. It's going to give us an instant REST API for the tables that we create. It also has the ability to give you real-time subscriptions and storage if you decide to use the JavaScript client or the Python client. Today we're just going to use uh, curl to actually hit our API. So the first thing you want to do is start a project, and you can link it right to your GitHub. I already have it linked to my GitHub, so I'm logged in here. I'm going to create a new project under my organization, um, and I'm going to call it Bruise API. And I have a password here that I've already created and generated, and I'm just going to go ahead and create this project. So it's going to go ahead and create that project, and what it's going to do is it's going to start setting things up. It's going to set me up with an instance. Um, it's going to start setting up a database, and you can see it's telling you what it's doing. So it's setting up my Brew API, provisioning your database, and your API endpoints. And it also gives you some information to get started. It says that our API is secured behind an API gateway, which requires an API key. And if you remember from our previous videos, if I pull up YouTube here, and you've checked out the YouTube, um, we built a serverless API with AWS Lambda, DynamoDB, Node, and TypeScript. There we we're also using API Gateway because serverless functions leverage that as well. Here we're not going to have to write any code or write any functions. Supabase is going to handle that for us. And again, I'm not sure if it's Supabase or Subabase, um, but pretty cool either way. So you can see here it's still setting up my API. It takes a little while, a few minutes, um, but it's going to give me a key that I can use as well as an API secret. It's also going to give us a URL for our endpoint. So here's the URL for this project and the JWC uh, T secret, which I can reveal. I'm not going to do that just yet. While this is being set up, let me go over and show you where we're going to get our data from. So I've created a Google sheet here called Brew Data. This is just some data representing beers. If you've visited any of my other videos, like the early one on the React Native app that we created using Recoil.js, we used beers as an example. It's just something fun I like to use. So I created um, a spreadsheet. We have an ID column. We have a name column, style column, brewery name, and a rating. These are integers, and these are just strings. And so this is what the rows in my database are going to look like, and this is what the different properties in my database are going to be. I'm going to show you how easy it is to take this spreadsheet and actually import it right to Superbase so that it ends up in our Postgres database. So back over here, we can see that it's still setting up our brew API. Again, takes a few minutes, but that's okay. What we're going to get for free from Superbase is going to be well worth the wait. While we wait, let's check out a few other things. Oh, no need to. It's up. But anyway, let's check it out anyway. So you can see down here, uh, it offers client libraries, like I said. So you can have a JavaScript client for easily interacting with your Superbase backend. You have a Python client and a Dart client. So the JavaScript library will allow you to do things like set up real-time subscriptions. So as things change in your database, as rows get added, removed, and updated, those changes will be pushed to your JavaScript application in real time through WebSocket. We're not going to use that today. I'm just going to show you how to set it up and use the REST client. But for now, 
pretty cool, so check that out. There's also some really awesome example products. So um, we have our database now, we have our authentication, and we have some storage. Storage is where you can use to storage files. So if you want to host images, things like that, something you would normally use Amazon S3 for, you can use Sibabase for as well. So check this out. I'm going to go over to database, and you can see I don't have any tables yet. So I'm going to create a new table. Uh, I'm going to call it brews. And the description is um, beer data containing basic info about the style, brewery, and a rating. Uh, I'm going to skip enabling row level security, but it is recommended, so you, you probably would want to do this if you're actually going to run this project uh, in production. So I'm going to go ahead and select import data from spreadsheet. And I have two options. I can upload a CSV. If you're working with Excel or Keynote or Google, you can always download your file as a CSV and upload it that way. But there's also a very convenient paste text. And it says right here, you can paste from Google Sheet or Excel. So we're going to do that. We're just going to copy from our Google Sheet, super easy, paste it here, and hit Save. Now, it's going to pull that data in. And you can see that it creates a property, a type, and a default value for each of those. It's also indicated to me that no primary key is selected. Now, the primary key is what's going to uniquely identify each of your rows. So we need to mark which one should be used as a primary key. In our case, we have an ID column, which I'm going to use as the primary key. So I select ID, hit Save, and now it's going to create those rows. And you can see at the top here, it's adding five columns to Bruce. So it's going to create that for me. Super easy, really awesome. Now it's going to create that table and create those rows. And there we go. We now have our Bruce table. It shows you the estimated size, the number of rows, and there's some really cool stuff that it gives us. So right away, we can go over to API. It's going to construct the docs specifically for your tables, which is fantastic. So you can see here under tables and views, I have my Bruce and I have right here in JavaScript how I can make requests using the client to get my Bruce as well as bash. I can see that I can just make a curl request and it tells you exactly how to do it. And it even hides away your super base key and, and your um, authorization and API key. I'm just going to show them and use them because again, I'm just going to delete this project afterwards. So it's no big deal, um, but it's pretty cool. And you have the ability to show and hide those keys right here. So what I'm going to do is just go over these docs and then we'll make a request. So you can see that first off, I can make requests for specific fields. I have my endpoint, REST endpoint here. You can see it's my superbase URL, slash REST, slash V1, and then the name of my table. If your table has a different name, your URL will be different. And that's why it generates the docs for each table. Here you can select what columns you want. So you can select ID, name, style. So again, very specific to my table. If you want to get all the rows, you can use select star. So just like you would in a SQL query. Um, so before I actually make this request, I also want to show you that you have the ability to use SQL. So right over here, we have the um, SQL tab on the left, and it gives you some basic snippets, creating a table, adding a column, show active connections, show versions, show extensions. I'm just going to run a raw SQL query just to show you that this is, in fact, uh, a table that I can use SQL to query. It's a Postgres table. So of course, SQL will work just fine. So we'll do a basic select star from Brews. And we'll run that. And we can always favorite those as well. So that's kind of cool. You can favorite that query and save it for later. So again, I ran it. And you see my results. There are my brews. And you can even you know do things like, let's say I want to select all of the beers um, that have a rating of, um, let's say, 4. So or we'll do 5. Let's do rating 5. So we'll select uh, the brewery name comma the name from brews where rating equals five run that and there we go we have six point the crisp and carton boat so very cool you can just run sql here so you can see what's in your database and of course you can always just go here and view your database you can view your rows um, in your table editor you can actually edit things manually so we have our brews table. You can create a new table from here. You can see I have my rows here. I can delete rows if I need to. I can insert a row. So you get this awesome UI for 
dealing with your Postgres database. And again, this is really great. It's very time saving. If you, if you want to spin up a product and you're not ready to spin up a backend, or maybe you're experimenting with your model and you're not ready to commit to anything, this is a great way to try it out. Again, it requires no code, although you can write code to create certain REST APIs, just like you would in serverless environment where you create serverless functions. Uh, serverless functions are actually coming to Superbase soon, according to the docs. But again, you can write specific route code. But for now, I'm going to use what's auto-generated. So I'm going to go back over to my API. I'm going to go to bash. And I'm going to see the API for my brews. I'm just going to go ahead and show my key for a second. I'm going to copy that request. Go over to my thing here. Let's open up a terminal. I'm just going to open up my Ubuntu shell. I'm going to paste that curl request, hit enter. And there you see I have my brews. I selected them in this case by ID, but I'm actually going to modify that request so that I select everything. Run that, and there you go. I have a working REST API that's returning a response, and I can connect this to a JavaScript client with the client. I can get real-time subscriptions through the JavaScript client, or I can just use it as is as a REST API. So pretty cool. So yeah, I've enjoyed checking out Superbase. Again, I tried it on my last stream, so check it out. You'll find that on YouTube. It should be posted pretty soon. Um, but yeah, definitely give Superbase a try. Again, if you want to spin up a quick API, work with your tables, try to figure out your model, just a really good way to start working on your product without having to think about what your backend solution is going to be, what language you want to use. Um, just a fantastic, I found it super easy. I used to really like Firebase and I'm really loving this. So I'm excited to see what else they add. And yeah, that's it. Hope you enjoyed this video on Superbase. Definitely give it a, a looks. And also again, it's super easy. Create your own sheet. You can create a Google Sheet. The time to iterate is super quick. If you want to change your model, your database model, super easy to do that. You have a UI for it. You can upload a Google Sheet, an Excel doc, a CSV. Really loving it so far. So check out Superbase. Let me know what you think in the comments below, and I hope you found this useful. Have a good night.